a booking and appointment manager for small business. The example that Microsoft gives on their website is like a dog grooming business where you'd have customers go to this bookings web page, uh, decide what service they want and the time slot, and then it handles all the booking for you and, and it handles reminders and things like that. The other part of it that we'll be talking about today is bookings with me, which is like a subsection of that. It doesn't deal with prices, but it's more for scheduling meetings with people outside the organization. This is a web-based tool. Um, so to activate it and set it up, the easiest thing is to go to Outlook.com or Office.com and then go to Outlook. It's the URL is Outlook.Office.com. So I'm going to just open that up now. It's just on a regular Outlook or the website? Uh, Outlook.Office.com. This is a web-based tool, so you will use the web-based tool to set up the web-based tool. Outlook.Office.com, right? Yeah, Outlook.Office.com. If you go to Office.com, you can choose Outlook from the list of tools. If you're familiar with the Microsoft 365 layout, when you go to Office.com, you get a list of tools that you can open up, and the one that we want to open is Outlook. Should it bring up your mail right away? Yeah, it'll bring up your mail right away. If you need to log in, you can do that now. You need to get out of your other Outlook, Brian. Right? Doesn't have to be. You can use them simultaneously. I uh, use the web version of Outlook uh, almost exclusively myself. Why is that? I can get to it anywhere on any computer that doesn't have to have the app installed. Even when you're in the office. Yeah, even when I'm in the office. All right. Um, so since this is kind of calendar related, we're going to go to the calendar section on the left side. Uh, right underneath mail is calendar. For me, it says underneath the calendar, small pane on the left pan pane, it says go to my booking page. On yours, it might say something like um, set up bookings or something like that. Oh, I see it. Where is it? Where is under your under the calendar. Under the calendar. Go to my phone. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to try to. Yeah, I don't know why my screen is like not right. updating. Uh, uh, Wait, wait one second. Uh, so Scott asking your question, Here. when would you use this? I think that um, that's a very salient question. The use case for this would be mainly for external reps that would be setting up a meeting with a potential customer. You could just send them this link and say, go to my bookings page and figure out when you have availability to meet with me. So you don't have to do the back and forth game of, well, this day or this day or that day. They can just go to your bookings page and set up an appointment with you whenever you have availability. Okay, I got it. Okay. okay, is everyone okay? Tom, did you have a question on there? Yeah, I, I do. I do. Okay. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I I you might have covered this, but I can't I can't tell um, when they're using the booking apps and you know all of us use our calendars in a different way and so we designate uh, um, when we put appointments on here a certain way uh, and some of us might not be doing it correctly so in order for the booking apps to work correctly uh, do we have to be very diligent about busy free all of that kind of stuff when we're setting up things on our calendar <clears throat> Yeah, I think that that's a good point. The uh, calendar in Outlook and the calendar on the web and the calendar in Bookings and the calendar in Teams all linked, all the same calendar. So if you have a spot marked off as busy, like say you already have an appointment there, Bookings will be smart enough to know to not double book you then. So if you um, like do an all day event that is busy, like for the management meeting today, then that will block off the whole day. So no one's going to try to do a no one can on your bookings page schedule a meeting. Well, Brian, I think the distinction is, is if I accept an appointment for an all day meeting, but I don't go in and click it and it's busy, is that okay? Uh, even if you have a pending appointment, bookings will not okay. override it. So like uh, when Scott sends the meetings to everybody for the management meeting, that's gonna just shut off everyone's bookings for the day. Uh, because it's like a pending appointment that's marked as busy. So if I created something on my calendar and I'm just doing some prep work, right? You know, and I don't mark it as busy. I just leave it. I just enter it. Someone they could book that time. Right? Yeah, by default, it's it's busy. So you'd have to change the appointment to be free time. 
Got it. So Spurs the default available. is busy. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. But, yeah, right. that's right. Okay. Um, so once we get to the bookings page, I'm going to open up my bookings page here. The, the first time that you get there, there's going to be a little wizard that'll pop up that'll say, um, would you like to try to set up your bookings page? And it'll give you um, like a template to go through that has like um, just like a basic office hours type booking that you can run through if you want to. But I'll open up the settings page here in a second and look at all the different settings that are available for you guys. Um, you're asking us to get it. There, you did it. Yeah, you're you're, you're set. You did it. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me, uh, let me okay. open up. Uh, I think you get a little lizard. I just took it straight to this pumpkin page. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's just usually the wizard runs yeah. and it's like has a pop up on the screen the first time. Yeah. But if it didn't, that's okay. You don't necessarily need the wizard at all. It's just like a demo. Um, I'm trying. All right. Sorry. All right then. Um, let's take a look here. This is the office hours ones that was added automatically via the uh, wizard when you first join the page or when you first go to the page. But I'm going to show you how this works if you don't want to run the wizard or if the wizard didn't come for you or come up for you automatically. There's two different kinds. There's public and private. Public is like you have this link saved somewhere and you send it to everyone that you would want to create a meeting with you. Um, so like a new prospect or anyone can view that and like select any time. Private would be a separate section of times that's only for certain specific people. I'd, if you only have one bookings page set up, there's probably no difference between the two. But imagine the scenario where like you want Mondays to be only for this type of person and Tuesdays to only be for this type of person. You can set up multiple private bookings pages for that and then send those links to those individual type of people. Or if you wanted only certain times to be for cat stuff and other times to be for other kinds of things, then you could have separate <laughs> bookings set up for that. But we're just going to deal with one today because I think that's going to cover most scenarios going to start with the public booking page so in the public section there's a plus icon there um, and you can title this whatever you want you can say uh, uh, learn about HPS the description you can be as descriptive as you want teams meeting that's helpful of course is selected by default and you can choose how long this is going to last for. And then, of course, public is fine. And then this section here where it says send an email. You can choose the people in here that you want to send email to when the new bookings comes in. This can be useful if like um, the region managers under you want to include you when a bookings gets booked or vice versa. That's totally optional. I'm going to clear that. Brian, quick question for you. The location, it automatically sets up the Teams meeting, correct? Yeah, it automatically sets it up a new Teams meeting for each time that someone creates a booking with you with this page. Brian, if I had clipped send an email with your personal booking page to your top collaborators, all those people that are going to receive it, unless I X them out. Yeah, that's right. I believe that you can um, even specify more. You can see all the people I email most frequently there, I guess. It's really just like an FYI or an invitation to that meeting. Yeah, it's an FYI. Um, it's just like a notification that this booking was created. There's also an option here right above that to append your booking page to your email signature. So that's kind of nice. It takes care of that automatically. 
That means like when you're sent out an email with your email signature, it'll have a link yeah, underneath it that like says that book time with me at my bookings mm -hmm. page or something like that. And it's got a link right in there for it. So go directly to it. You can also copy the bookings link and use it however you want. Send it to someone, text it to them. I mean, if you wanted to do that or however you want to do that. And when you say copy the bookings link, it's the one, where is that? The bookings link is created after you create the bookings page and it's like a random link that is unique to you um, so it's like when you share a file on the cloud it creates a, a link that's uniquely generated it's the same with the bookings page it creates a uniquely generated bookings link that anyone can click on they'll come to your bookings page where they can see your availability and schedule time with you so is that on your profile that first profile page or it says the focus button it says just click share mm -hmm. yeah and duplicate yeah, there's duplicate, there is copy the link. Yep. So you can create multiple duplicates of the same bookings configuration. And then, um, you know, because David Bottle Bob uses this, so he said the link and then he has availability. If we had the link in our signature, would we have to create actual available appointments for people to shoot from, or do they just see availability as? as they see, they see the blanks and you can filter it down further than that and that's a good question because we're going to talk about that next we're going to talk about how to filter it down so that you don't get people wanting to give you an 8 a.m uh appointment on you know your day off or something <laughs> but, you know like for our outside people if our members are seeing this i mean we could be in a whole different state but we have open time on our calendar so. yeah yeah, as long as and it handles time zones and everything for you too, which is nice. So I don't know if I'm getting ahead. I sent myself a link to whatever I just created and I clicked on the link and it's showing me what it says are all my available times and but it shows me if every day um, every time is available. Yeah, by default, it'll do regular meeting hours, which is not getting ahead because that is literally what I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, so this schedule customization section uh, under that is that you use regular meeting hours and you can either do that or you can use custom availability hours. You can uh, once you switch to custom availability hours, you get a lot of flexibility here. You can do certain date ranges so you can exclude a holidays uh, when you create a bookings page. Do I have to manually enter what my. Uh, it doesn't already know what my booked hours are. Or does it? Uh, if you choose the default, then it'll be like eight to five. Every day. Every day. So if you have nothing booked at eight, they can book something or five. They can book at something. At four thirty or. Yeah, Friday. He might say I want at four thirty. What I'm asking is, do I have to go in and enter all the meetings times that I already have scheduled? Oh no, not at all. Uh, it should know the meetings that you have availability for. It is a little bit of a pendulum box. You have to have to be somewhat very confident. So we can choose a date range, start and end range. If you want to create a bookings page that was only for like a blitz uh, type scenario. Yes. Um, and then you can pick the days and you can pick the start and end times on those days. Like if you only want it to be from 10 a.m. to noon on a certain day, you could definitely do that. And then there would only be those two slots available since we picked um, a one hour time slot. Yeah, so you can just, it does, it, for some reason, and maybe because the, the wizard didn't appear, it's not showing any of my current meetings. OK, can I just take two steps back when you say what what you're creating right now is it something that you're going to send out to, in theory, something sent out to a group, right? To learn about HBS, you're going to have that's going to be on your booking page. You're going to send, a, send that to someone and say, OK, I want you guys, whoever you send it out to, to learn about HPS. And they're going to get a link, right? And that's what you're creating right now. Is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah. Just be on your email. You want to talk to me? Well, yeah, but what is he doing right now? Like, learn about what's your eventual goal with this booking? Uh, so with this booking, it's like a subset of available dates and times that right. you would send to someone and then they would be able to choose when they wanted to meet with you, 
with the subject of learning about so APS. Next week, I want to do like some stats, right? So I want everyone for one hour, I, like I would create like a HPS status meeting. And then I'm going to create the data. And I only want to do it Monday and Tuesday because I'm off on Wednesday. I do Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, you these could do days. That. But to create it, and then I'm going to send that to certain people. So yeah, you could do that. In that case, you'd probably want to use a private one. Um, so that if someone went to your public bookings page, they wouldn't. So this book would it. be like general. I'm gonna leave it out there. Anyone want to learn about HPS? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't understand. Like, what we have. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky of a concept. Um, when you lose all these people. It's like you're scheduling different appointments, but you don't know who the person is. You're just gonna leave it out there. Yeah. Available to for anyone to learn about HPS Mondays and Tuesdays for the whole year. So yeah. Call me up. if I, then they can go in and see when I'm available on Mondays and Tuesdays. Yeah, and it'll it should show up on your case calendar so you know that you know Stephen from wherever is going to call you on this specific Tuesday to learn about it yeah so this so far pretty self-explanatory but let's look at the advanced options here he lost something here the advanced the advanced options just so you guys know they're here you probably don't have to use these every time uh, buffer time before the meeting. So if you need breaks before and after a meeting, uh, if you have an idea that the meeting might run long and you want it to run long, you can have a buffer time after the meeting. And then uh, bookings will not schedule a meeting like to a butt right next to each other if you have those buffer times configured. And then uh, limit the start time to certain intervals. That would be so that someone can't schedule a meeting with you at uh, 3.05 exactly p.m. They have to choose 3 or 3.30, uh, but that can be adjusted here with limit start time intervals. And then uh, minimum lead time, that would be like, so someone can't schedule a meeting with your bookings in like two minutes. <laughs> like it's 9.56 and they're like, I want a 10 a.m. meeting. So that gives you at least a little bit of time to prepare. That's adjustable. And then the maximum lead time, that is how far in the future someone can book something with you. I think the 90 days default is probably fine too. And then the email reminders and email follow-up, that is kind of neat. It allows you to send an email. The system will automatically send an email reminder to the person that signed up for the bookings appointment with you. So that's kind of a cool um, feature. You can edit it here. Like what you say, like, hey, excited to meet with you about this in 10 minutes or whatever. Um, and then the system will automatically schedule and send that email for you. And you can personalize it right in this section. And then, of course, a follow up email is possible, too, is like uh, great chatting with you. Uh, remember, these are the links that we talked about. You know, this is like the link for CAT. This is the link for HPSnet.com uh, if you need more information or like whatever, and the system will automatically send a follow-up email after you meet with the person, if you want to do that. So I'm going to save this, learn about HPS booking, and then we'll see what it looks like here on the main screen. And this is what Nathan was talking about earlier, where you can go to the three dots and you can share it, and that will give you the link you can send to people. You can copy the link, can share it directly. Duplicate would be like if you want to make several copies of the same thing and change them slightly. And then, of course, you can move it to the private section from here or delete it entirely. Can you edit it? Um, yeah, I believe that you just click on it to edit it. Yeah. I saved it in the email to myself. And then when I clicked on it, I saw it blocked times. Oh, okay. So. So I guess conceptually, the best way to think about the bookings app is you're creating an appointment for somebody. You don't know who, uh, but they're going to sign up and tell you who they are, and then you can meet with them about whatever the subject is. So when you're setting up the booking item, when you title it, think of it as like the meeting title of what kind of meeting you would generally have with that person. You can have public and private. You can have public ones that are available to anyone that has your general link. Or you can set up private ones that you'd only send to one specific person about one specific thing. I think that for the most part, 
you guys would probably benefit. Uh, you know, in my mind, my guess, I guess, would be that you would probably benefit from just setting up at least one public meeting that um, people can click on and, you know, like this office hours meeting link they give you by default is someone can click on that and have 30 minutes to bend your ear about whatever the thing is that they want to talk to you about. So if they, so I have someone on my team wants to schedule 30 minutes for me, right? And I've got like this hour general one and a half hour general one. Do I have to send them that booking or is it on my calendar? They pull it up, click, like how do they? As long as they're both in your public section, then all they have to do is click on your bookings, your main bookings like profile link. And that would be on my calendar? Um. Yeah, you can give them the link. Uh, either you can have it in your signature, but it's going to be a link that they're going to have to have. Usually the communication channel will go, hey, so and so, great to hear. If you want to speak with me some more, here's a link to my calendar. Check it out, see what time works for you. For people on your team, they will probably just have your link. Um, what yeah, what did you probably have a bookmark. <laughs> Scott test. Yeah. HPS meeting. And I would see this is only, we would only be using this for virtual meetings. We would never be using this for in person. No. Because, I don't it's travel and stuff. And, uh, I just wanted to show you guys here what my public bookings page looks like now. And you can see there's two options there's the office hours one, which is the default one that they guide you through if you happen to get the wizard when you log in. And then there's the learn about HPS one that we just created. And you can see you have all the options here. And if you pick one, then it'll be just for an hour. And you can see I don't have the 1 p.m. one available here um, because I have my lunch blocked off on my calendar between one and two. And then the office hours, um, 30 minutes is just has the 2 p.m. because I have that one filtered down to just be in the afternoon. And I have to tell everybody don't schedule time. Follow up. That's Kevin. The thing no I'll email you. I'll email you. I'm wondering if you have any description for the engineering. I closed this one, but I didn't. Yeah, Tom, just a second. Uh, in, yep. in description for the generic one, I have just whatever they included. Uh, in like the wizard, but you can put something in here and it'll show up in this box underneath. Uh, I'm keeping aside some time in the day for listening, sharing, and helping each other with questions, queries, or concerns. Feel free to book time with me. Yeah, it's like whatever the subject of the meeting is. So for me, I put office hours. Schedule time with me. Yeah. All that. I, I think office hours is, is reasonable or ear bending session or whatever you want to call it. Hey, Brian. Ear bending okay. session. A little confused. When you check, when you check that thing that you wanted to be on your signature, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Is it only on your signature when you're on line or if you use the app as well? I have not tested that feature. I and I use the web version of Outlook, so I might be different than uh, but it did add it to my signature in the web version of Outlook. Tom, did you have a question too? Yeah, I did. It's more it's more us taking this to the next step and trying to uh, uh, get some people to go ahead and try this and see how it works and see how how uh, our connection with our members are. And so I, I would be very interested to know if there's anybody on the, uh, and I'll uh, call out the member development team, if there's any of, of your people that would like to pilot this for us to see what kind of adoption they can get and what kind of uh, enhanced uh, meeting, uh,